It ain't over until you say it is. I haven't really talked about injuries a whole lot, but if you do powerlifting at a competitive level for any significant amount of time, you're gonna get injured. Let's face it, you're gonna get some kind of strain, sprain, oopsie, you come out of the groove. Anytime you're putting, you know, three times your body weight on your back, all you gotta do is not step back with your hips tight and you can totally blow your joint out of the socket. I've seen that happen. Hernias, all sorts of things. I, in the last couple years, have had three injuries that I was told I would never be able to power lift competitively again. Now, the first one, I think it was either uh, 2019 or 20, no, but 2020, I want to say. Was, well, I can't even remember the year, but if you go back in my history, I want to say 2020. I did something to my hip where it pinched off the sciatic nerve and I lost the use of my leg. I could not walk. I couldn't move my leg at all. As a matter of fact, I had to be immobilized to where my foot was in a specific position at a specific angle on a pillow at an elevation. And if I moved, if I reached over to grab a drink, I was in excruciating pain. And for two weeks I couldn't walk. And I started over from zero. I had no use of that leg and slowly but surely I worked back to, you know, now I'm squatting more than I ever have in my entire life. I have a slight fracture, my L5 spindolysis, they call it, grade one. I got issues with my hips. Uh, I had uh, 48 stitches in my back. I completely blew my knee out uh, where I had to have reconstructive surgery and they had to cut tendons out of my uh, kneecap and replace my ACL and my PCL. It was a, it was a gnarly mess. M more recently, I had, I was benching a little over 400 pounds, 405, 410, somewhere in there. That was last, I want to say September. And I felt like it sounded like Velcro was tearing. And I, when I, I immediately let go of the bar and my arm turned purple and I obviously tore something in my shoulder. They said, oh, you're done benching. And I rehabbed that. I've had so many injuries that were supposed to end my career. And I've come back from every single one of them. And so far, I've come back stronger. There's a caveat. It is a process. And if you don't love the process, you're probably not gonna come back. Now, this might shock some people, but I never wanna see anybody injured. You know, I we might not all like each other, we might not all agree, but I don't I don't care if you're my worst enemy, I don't wanna see anyone get hurt. And if you are hurt, you have my deepest sympathies. But I'm here to tell you, it's only over when you say it is. You don't have to quit. But you might have to dig deep. You might have to dig deep. The process, it's not easy. It starts with, you know, if you look back at my physical therapy playlist and you watch the videos in chronological order, you will see my first two or three videos was me starting from step zero to where I could barely lift my leg and I could do just bare, bare, bare movements. It was tough, man. It was really tough. And slowly but surely, I did those little movements until I could do a little bit more and I could add bands with resistance and then I could start stretching and then I could put weight on the leg and then I started squatting, you know, kettlebells and just trying to get my range of motion back. And then I started, you know, it, it was it was a whole bunch of stretching and physical therapy lifts and going to physical therapy and seeing a physical therapist and going to a pain specialist and even getting surgery consultations. And, you know, they said that the last thing they want to do is start cutting on me. And that, I will say surgery, 
Let's, surgery should be your last resort. For a lot of people, surgery is the only way to fix a problem if it's gotten so bad. But statistically, surgery messes up as much as it fixes. So for some people, surgery it just fixes it. They get in there, they fix it, you're good to go after six months of physical therapy and you're back to business. But, you know, a lot of times they get the cutting on you and things are just never right again. I have been living with chronic knee issues since 1996. That's the whole reason I started squatting to begin with. My doctor told me I needed to strengthen up the muscles around the knee and tighten everything up. And he said that squatting will, will do that. Cause, because what was happening was my knee was slipping out of its joint. I would walk and it would just pop out and then my leg would lock up. And it was horrible. And it just kept doing that. And he said the only way to fix that is either do surgery again, which I already had two, or start squatting. And just start working that range of motion and just do it the old fashioned way, get stronger. And boy, how did, did I? Uh, man, I remember the first time I barbell squat, I had two twenty. I had a twenty-five on each side, and I did like a set of five, and uh, I was so sore I couldn't walk the next day. I mean, it was pathetic. It was pathetically weak. Now it's like I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine like anything less than five plates. Yeah, it won't even make me sore. Like, I could do 315 for a set of 30 when Bobby had me doing those high rep stuff. And that doesn't even make me sore. It's laughable now, but, you know, like, dude, I started from zero. And I did it a couple times. Why am I going into all this? It's not about the injury. It's about the path to recovery. And the mindset that's required for you to heal yourself. Is, is it a guarantee? No, but so one of the things that I have in spades is an almost psychotic persistence, a chip on my shoulder, and a childlike faith that everything's going to be all right. Those three times I got injured and the three times I thought I'm done and I can't, I'm not going to power lift anymore. Like I, I, I didn't want to power lift if I couldn't be the best. The reason I'm competing now is because of the level I'm at. And I just want to see how far I can take it before it's too late. And honestly, this one, this uh, upcoming meet in October, you know, the more and more it's looking like this is going to be my last big one. Uh, because, you know, I am starting to aggregate a lot of injuries and now it's becoming like a quality of life thing. <clears throat> and I do all the stuff that I need to do to, to uh, maintain good flexibility and health, but I mean, you get to a point where you're just grinding yourself and grinding yourself, and it's not that I can't keep going, but I, it, it, it does beg the question, like, is that what I want to do? And, you know, I'm starting to get to that point where it's like, yeah, do I really want to keep doing this? I'm on the fence, because I'm still having fun, I still enjoy the process, I'm still competitive, I've got great numbers, I love the camaraderie, I love the sport. But, you know, I'm starting to think maybe it's time to transition into, you know, more coaching, that kind of thing. The process. you got to love it. You have to embrace the physical therapy. There's a reason why I do all this silly stretching and these little light, weird lifts like Jefferson Curls and all this other nonsense that most lifters think is boring and you no know, waste of time and whatever. It's because as you get older... You know, over the age of 40, we'll say, that seems to be like the metric for aging athletes. Like 40 is like the cutoff where it starts, the numbers of people that are still participating in the sport drops drastically. You know, you don't, the oldest NFL player, high is how old, 45, and he's one of like five people over the age of 40 that are in the league starting. You know, I'm sure there's some bench warmers, but. You just don't see a lot of guys in their 40s playing professional sports. Even in their late 30s, they start calling them old. You know, I remember watching Michael Jordan as a kid growing up, and he was, what was he, 38? And they were saying, oh, he's, he's getting old now. He's lost a step. He's just not what he used to be. And I remember as a kid thinking, well, just look at this old guy. And then, you know, now I look back, and I'm like, 38's 
freaking kindergarten. You know what I mean? Like 38, I was spry as hell. My hell, my best year physically was the age of 40. I'd been sober for a while. I was getting into shape. I was strong. I got my mobility back. I was uh, under uh, 198, slim. 40 was great. I was running up and down mountains with my, my St. Bernard's and my, my wife. and We were uh, kicking ass and taking names. We were still partying and going to concerts. And 40 was awesome. 45, five years later. Oof, man, how the mighty have fallen. Let me tell you, you start notice it really quickly and you know then I went on TRT and started a different path and that changed that was a game changer I felt like I was 20 again but every year that goes by let me tell you you know these guys usually guys my age will leverage things like ah oh, look at this guy he's not that old look at him talking about like he's old or no he's just saying whatever there's guys that are seven years old that are st shut up 49 for competing in powerlifting at a high level is fucking old. Old as fuck. Masters. Masters 2. I'm about to be 50. That's Masters 3. Now, the, the, the number of high level competitors at my age is not even a tenth of what the open division is. It drops off. Where did they all go? If 49 so young and everybody's doing it, where are they? They don't exist because they're all either fucked up because they didn't take care of themselves or they did drugs for too long or whatever. Fill in the blank. They just don't exist. Like, I had the advantage, so I didn't start competing until I was 40 years old, so I didn't have the mileage a lot of the, uh, the guys my age had. So it was almost like I was fresh going into it. I, uh, now it's starting to catch up with me. And, and, uh, and I still don't have the mileage that the guys my age have on me. But, uh, you know, there's some cracks in the foundation is what I'm saying. But I love the process. You know, I really learned to embrace. After I came back from my leg being messed up, where I couldn't walk, you, you have no idea how much that impacted me. I thought my life was over. That's how bad it was. As I came back from that, and I really embraced the process, and I saw how it all worked, I started learning about anatomy. I took a real interest in physical therapy. I started working with other disabled veterans. Um, I got to see some of the struggles they go through. We all healed each other together. You know, we go down to the VA and do our little physical therapy thing, and I got to collaborate with a lot of people. And I really started to just love and embrace the process and that's when I started getting heavy into stretching and yoga and I started picking up boxing and I started kicking the bag again and I started doing a lot of the athletic stuff that I had set aside so for the longest time I was just powerlifting, you know squat bench deadlift heavy lift mongo go and I ignored cardio and all that other stuff that they say that you should do until it went south on me and now I now I would not skip it for the world. As a matter of fact, I would almost go far to to say that I like that more than I like powerlifting. I love that stuff. It's weird because it's something to say that like you're the number one squatter. Like you could pick the most weight up while you're doing the splits. You know, like the little lift I do. Like uh, I would like to see what the world record for being able to. Uh, perform good mornings with your feet in an almost like, you know, 210 degrees. <laughs> like, what, what are the numbers for that lift specifically? Because um, I do some really extreme lifts, and it's all designed to open the hips up, and every day, everything I do has a purpose. I do yoga with the wife. Uh, I just do a lot of cool stuff that I would have never considered when I was healthy, and all my joints worked, and I wasn't feeling pain every day. And now I do a lot of this stuff to help mitigate the pain because I, I don't have the option of being on just drugs for everything. And it, I'm telling you, it, once you start seeing results and you start gaining some of that ability back that you had when you were a kid <clears throat> and you transform your body, you know, because you have, you're going to have no choice. I mean, you start working at and really putting the effort into some of the physical therapy stuff you'll start regaining abilities that you hadn't had in a while because we don't work on this stuff. And as you start getting those back, as you start making progress on that plane, 
it, you learn to love it because it just changes your life. Like everything from just doing chores around the house to being at work, walking around a job site, climbing up ladders, you know, just picking things up off the floor, tying your shoes. Like without having to sit in a chair, you're all hunched over trying to put your boots on and you can't breathe because you, you know, it changes you. It, your, your quality of life goes up exponentially. You get your energy back. You start wanting to participate, play with the kids, go to the park, climb mountains again. Everything, just everything. You know, like I'm living now like I was in my 20s, like I was in my 30s. You know, I lost an entire decade and uh, and then I let myself go to where all I was really able to do was lift heavy. That was it. That's all I could do. And you see the power lifters. You see these guys, right? They, they get out there and big old or gets under the squat bar or hits a huge amount of weight, racks it and then waddles off and then slumps into a chair and waits for his next set. Like that's literally all that guy could do. He could do three lifts and nothing else. Could barely bend over to pick the bar up to deadlift it. You don't, it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't. 10, 15 minutes a day, three times a week, and you can start regaining some of that functionality back. If you have injured yourself and you think that you're done and you're not going to be able to do what you love anymore, all I'm saying is don't give up. Start from scratch, start from zero, and do the things that are necessary and watch how fast you build up. It'll happen way quicker than you think it will. And it's certainly not going to happen if you don't do anything. Look, I wish you the speediest of recoveries, and I'll even go so far as to say if there's anything I can do to help, I am always available 100%, especially when it comes to anything that's related to recovery or pain or any of that. That's my mission in life. I want you to hurt less and be able to do more.